Oxton Camp. On Friday night we set out on a camp which proved to be very enjoyable as you will see by the amount of things we did. Captain and myself went by bus in peace and comfort while the others squashed themselves in the van that was to carry the luggage. The first night at camp was very uncomfortable for some of us as we either slept on a hump or in a hollow but in time we got hardened to it and finished the rest of the stay in comfort. The days on the whole were warm but on the Wednesday we experienced a dreadful thunderstorm the result of which I developed cold. Anne's parents came over, so did Betty's. They were both caught on the way. However, a steaming cup of Milo and some biscuits soon made it all cheerful. One evening, when it was growing dusk, leaving the others in the tent, Captain, Anne and myself went a long walk into the countryside around. We saw literally millions of rabbits playing around in the grass and a fox and cubs run through the bracken, down the hillside and into a wood below. We had a gorgeous time, stalking rabbits on our stomachs and actually got within two yards of one, who was calmly washing itself. We found a clean water spring and washed our faces, for as you probably will know, it gives a lovely complexion. Another day we spent picnicking and exploring. We found a lake and paddled in a stream which found its source there and took some snaps which will be shown below. Fetching water was quite a big thing as we had to pass through a field full of bullocks which were very frisky or the alternative pigs. But apart from these slight blemishes we enjoyed every minute of it. The daughter at the farm was getting married while we were there and some of us saw the wedding cake. Betty asked how many stories there were, meaning tears, and was very pleased to find it had three. All too soon we had to pack and we arrived in Nottingham about 9pm and Mr Stacy and Mrs Morris fetched us in their car. Shown below are some of the snaps and you will see from our happy faces that we all had a jolly good time. Marissa Ellis. These were the pictures included in the logbook. Not brilliant pictures, but they were taken 65 years ago. After this very pleasant and happy camp, we began to think about some new members, as for one thing, we hadn't enough members to get up a concert in June. Anne Taylor joined us, and we started a junior club, and Pat Ellis, Pat Rolls, Mavis Rolls, and Penny Hill were soon enrolled with senior club badges, only smaller than the seniors. Junior time was 6 till 7, and the seniors 7 to 8.30, Tuesday nights as usual. On June the 20th we set off on our new adventure, Youth Hostelling, and Wendy, as she told us about Shining Cliff, not the best of hostels, is writing about the weekend and the photos will follow. Shining Cliff. Betty, Captain, Vice Captain, Marissa and myself went to the Shining Cliff Youth Hostel on June 20th, by coach to Ambergate, and then we found our way through the woods and the wireworks up to the hostel, which consists of about five wooden shacks looking out over the woods with some huge stone cliffs touching behind them. We went into somebody's back garden in the woods before we got there, and although it said two miles on the signpost, it seemed a lot more to us as it was growing late. However, we arrived, cooked our own supper, baked beans and cocoa I think, and went to bed. Marissa, Betty and I went into one hut and Captain and Vice Captain in a larger one and we then at least fell asleep almost directly. The following morning we cooked breakfast 
and did several odd jobs about the hostel and then we got our packed lunches and set off for a day's walking. I said there was a large lake in the woods but nobody believed me and we never found it. We went up higher out of the woods and went through a private deer park but we saw no deer. Then we came out onto a road and met some other people we had met in the hostel. We joined up with them who thought they could understand maps. However, we went through fields and into some woods, through a marshy place and onto a road again. We continued down this road by ourselves and found a small ford where we paddled and ate our dinner, which consisted of dry bread and lettuce and marmalade. Captain and Vice-Captain had great difficulty in finding the right road back. We started off along one twice, but decided to turn back, and it was just as well that we did, since it was the wrong one. We found another road, which finally led us back opposite the park gates, and hence we got back into the woods where we had tea, and on to Ambergate, where, although the buses were full, we managed to get on safely and arrived home about 8.30pm. I enjoyed myself very much, but nobody else seemed to enjoy the hostel where we stayed, although they enjoyed the walking, I think. Soon after this, the seniors went to spend a pleasant Tuesday evening on the River Trent, I think Marissa has something to say about this trip. River Trent Trip Last June 1953, Club set off for a trip on the River Trent. It was a fine evening and we were all in good spirits as we set off. We practically had the boat to ourselves, which was probably lucky for the people who weren't there, as most of the club were soaking wet through by the time we got back owing to Betty Shaw, Anne Parkinson, Rosemary Neal and myself who would persist in dragging our hands through the water and also skimming, sending a shower over the unfortunate person in the way. When we got back and were very cold and wet, some sensible people had an ice cream to hot themselves while others indulged themselves in a steaming cup of tea out of very greasy looking cup. Then we decided to have a game, and finally ended up singing on the bus which carried us homewards, Marisa Ellis. On July 18th and 19th we had a little camp down the garden, with Anne and Rosemary in the little tent, and I slept in the shed. And I think we all got quite a thrill out of it. We cooked our own Sunday dinner, which was jolly good. We did not have a meeting in August, but a few of us did go for a little picnic on August the 11th, as you can see from the photo over the page. The weather looked rather doubtful as we set off to see the Dr Bernardo's home, but the rain did manage to keep off. We were Captain, Wendy, Betty, Pat Ellis and myself. We had an interesting bus ride to Derby, where we changed and caught an Ockbrook bus. The conductor told us where to get off. The Dr Bernardo's home just looked like a large old house of grey stone. When we went inside, we noticed how well looked after everything seemed to be. We were greeted by a man who asked us to wait a moment while he went to fetch a boy of about 14 years of age who was to show us round the place. There were three dormitories, one in pink, one green and one blue. We were also shown the room where the boys had their meals and then shown the kitchens and we saw how spotlessly clean they were. While we were on our travels we passed a small boy in the corridor who had been sent out to one of the rooms and he was looking very sorry for himself. We were told that the boys went to 
various schools round about so that they could mix with other children and if they passed their exams they were allowed to go to grammar schools. We were by then beginning to wonder where the boys were at the present time and we found out that they were all in the common room enjoying themselves in some way or another. We then went out into the garden and we discovered that the boys who wanted had a piece of garden to look after. They were also greenhouses, inside which were the most beautiful grapes. We were introduced to the boy's pony that someone had given to them at some time, and we were told that it was the duty of one boy to look after it. When we had toured the gardens, we went back to the house and said our goodbyes, and then set off for home, and we discussed what we had seen and liked most about the home on our way back. Anne Parkinson, Vice Captain. This is a letter that Anne had received from the superintendent at Southwood, which is the home at Holbrook near Derby. Dear Miss Parkinson, in answer to your letter of 31st of July, I am sorry I have not answered before. We are camping at Prestatyn, North Wales, until the 29th of August, and have not had the time until now. We will be pleased to see six or seven of the girls from the Sheridan Club on Sunday 6th of September during the afternoon. I would like to point out, although I expect you already know, that Southwood is an entirely all-boys home. Yours truly. Anne was obviously fixing the visit up herself.